Hi guys and welcome back to another show of Keto in the Kitchen with Jasmine. Today we're going to be making steak with wilted arugula. I hope you enjoy the show. Thanks for being here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to be pounding the steak so that it will cook evenly. We're going to pound it with a meat mallet and I'll show you what I mean by that. What this does basically is it tenderizes the meat for more even cooking. So there's a shot of my steak and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pound the meat with the meat mallet and I'm going to place another piece of parchment over top of the meat so that the steak is laying between two pieces of parchment paper because right now there's only parchment paper on the bottom of the steak and then I'm going to pound the meat. So what you're going to do is pound both sides of the meat. So you'll pound it on one side first and then flip it over and pound the other side of the meat. And that should lightly tenderize it. Just make sure you apply an even light pressure. You don't have to play whack-a-mole with it. Um, just a light pressure will do. And then it should be tenderized enough. And you're going to salt, pepper, and sprinkle garlic and onion powder on it. So for salt, pepper is next, and I'm just using Kroger. garlic powder, and onion powder. And apply it liberally to both sides. And this is what it looks like seasoned. Next, you're gonna take about two tablespoons of butter and you're going to put that in a pan that has been set to medium high and has been cooking for a little bit so it's ready to go. So I let my pan heat up a lot. Now I'm going to put the butter in it. And Gordon Ramsay always says to put everything towards the back of the pan or the pot so it's away from you so there's less chance of spillage and less chance of you getting burned. And this is how it came out. Now that my butter's melted, I'm going to put the steak in the pan. And I've just added a screen, so it's a splatter-proof screen over the top of it to prevent it from shatter or from splattering. And I took a picture of it so you guys will be able to see it if you don't know what I mean. And this is how it came out. So that's just the bottom side that was cooked. And I flipped it over to cook the other side. And I also turned on my oven to high, like high on the broiler. So I'm doing a high broil on this for about six minutes. And that should cook the inside. And just remember, keep in mind that your internal temperature for a steak should be 145 degrees. Um, unless, of course, you're doing raw or medium, or I mean, you're doing rare or medium rare. But um, I'm not really that great at uh, knowing how to cook steak just because I was raised as a vegetarian and it's not something I grew up doing. So I'm doing the best I can here. Um, I'm sure I'm making a lot of errors, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Also, the funny part is I don't eat steak, so I give this away. 
Okay, so I had already lined my baking sheet with tin foil, and I put the steak on the tin foil, and I took a picture of that so you can see what I'm talking about. I put the steak and the pan closer to the bottom of the oven to get it closer to the broil. And so what it's going to do is it's going to stay there for six minutes per side. Um, that should be about right. If it needs longer, that's okay. And you can always check on it as you're going along. You can check on the temperature. You can make sure it's 145 or whichever, whatever you prefer your temperature to be for your steak. So I wanted to show you guys a shot of the first half of the steak, so the top half, and then I'm going to turn it over. Right now, the internal temperature is about 100 degrees. Okay, so the steak is finished broiling, and now I'm going to plate it. I just wanted to mention that the steak recipe was inspired by Damn Delicious, and I posted the recipe down below. Now what we're going to do is make the steak sauce, and the recipe was inspired by two different recipes that I found. One was actually found from a book that I had gotten from a thrift store, and that book is The New Texas Cuisine. And then the other recipe that it was inspired by was also from Damn Delicious, and I posted that in the description as well. Although, of course, these are my recipes. They're inspirations from other recipes that I modify. So to make the steak sauce, what we're going to do is we're going to take three roasted garlic cloves, and we're going to put that in the food processor. Next, it's one teaspoon of my homemade horseradish. And this is really interesting because behind my house, I have horseradish growing. So what I do is I usually just prepare it. That's a process in, a, in itself. But what I do is after I prepare it, I float it in a vinegar bath and I store it in the fridge so I can have it for easy access for sauces and all sorts of recipes that I create. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. And I'm going to add it to the food processor and we'll go over the preparations of making horseradish another day. One half cup of mayonnaise, three tablespoons of sour cream, one half cup of unsalted butter at room temperature, and that's one stick. Next, you're going to add one tablespoon of lemon juice and then one half teaspoon each of salt, pepper, and thyme. Two tablespoons of parsley. And then one teaspoon each of rosemary and basil. And then lastly, one pinch of cayenne pepper. And this is what it looks like blended together. And what I did is I placed it in a glass bowl. And now whoever I carry this recipe to can have a Pyrex bowl to use with their dipping sauce for their steak. Next, what I'm going to do is make the wilted arugula. And I'm going to keep the um, beef broth that's in there from the steak in the pan and I'm going to use it as a base to start building my base. So what we're going to do now is take four slices of cooked bacon, but first I actually have to cook the bacon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a baking sheet and I'm going to put four strips of bacon on it and I'm going to, which is turkey bacon, I'm going to put that in the oven on 350 degrees and I'm going to bake that for approximately 25 minutes. Um, just be sure to watch it because I'm not sure what it is on your oven. So the bacon is really going to be more of a topping as is the dried cranberries and the pecans. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to add one tablespoon of olive oil one teaspoon of sesame oil and one pat of butter to a media to a pan on medium heat.
Next, we're going to add one half of a chopped red onion and then just saute the onion until it's translucent so it's no longer purple. Now add one teaspoon of rosemary and one half teaspoon of black pepper. And then give it a stir and add the arugula. Now add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, and one teaspoon of Bragg's amino acids. Your bacon is now cooked, so what we're going to do is we're going to bake the pecans in the oven at 350 degrees for approximately 10 minutes. Just be sure to check it and maybe stir it as it's in the oven. Take it out and give it a stir or put it back in and make sure it's cooked or toasted. My bacon is now cooled and I've added it to the pan with the arugula and the other ingredients. And I've also added about half a cup of dried cranberries. My pecans are now, now toasted. I want to see if I can give you a shot of that. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to chop them in half and then we're going to top the arugula with them. And here's what my dish looks like and I'm going to put it in the baking dish with the steak. And I've decided to add a little tomato and basil feta to it and I'll take a picture of that and show you that as well. So that concludes our show today for Keto in the Kitchen with Jasmine, and I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. You guys have a great rest of your week.